Hello and um, welcome to another week in our garden. Sunday today, sun shining, beautiful day. Just a wisp of wind just to keep cool. It's a lovely day for picking gooseberries. Now if there ever was a good day for picking prickly gooseberries, today is it. As you can see the red ones are really ready for picking so we must get them while they're in this condition they're absolutely beautiful and lovely and sweet this year the green ones you can see they're filling up nicely so we'll try and pick those as well so we'll have a, an afternoon of picking gooseberries and a few berries and then we'll see you later on Diane and I have picked the red gooseberries we're absolutely scratched up with them but We've had an excellent pick. We've only got three bushes of red, but this is the result. As you can see, there's quite a few of them. They'll all want topping and tailing now. Yes. Now we're going to pick these green gooseberries. Green gooseberries are not so bad. They're not quite as prickly as the red. Now we've finished the green gooseberries. We've only got one bush, so it didn't take long with two of us. Here they are. Half a basket. Look very nice. They're very sweet this year. Now, this is the gooseberry harvest for this year. Took quite a bit of picking with a pair of us, but we got it done in the air. Fair few berries there. Now, we will be sharing these with the family and with the neighbours. There's far too many for just us. We're back in the fruit cage, it's a lovely day and um, we're going to do the raspberries. What we're going to do, this is, these are floricanes so we need to remove all the canes that were bore fruit this year up to now and leave the canes that are growing that are going to bear the fruit for next year. The easiest way I find is instead of starting from the bottom and coming up is to work your way down each stem. Then when they're all off, tie the new ones that are growing now in. So these canes here, look, these are the ones that bore the fruit. We've had all the fruit off them, so we'll start cutting them off. Once you've got them all off, they, they can go through the shredder because most of them are green stem and the soft wood anyway. Go through the shredder and go on to the compost heap. They soon rot down. So we just take all these off. Look, we'll do this one and then, but keep looking to make sure you've got the, the one that's bore the fruit. Once you get down the bottom, you'll tell the difference between, this is an old cane nut, which is brown, and this is a new cane which is green so when you're down there but at the top just make sure it's got old fruit buds on it it's easier let's cut these off now remember if you view plastic ties put them in your pocket don't want those on the garden And that's what I do. I just slowly work my way down each one. The old string we had on, if you used this, which was jute string, it does snap quite easily and it will decompost in the compost heap, so it'll be fine. Follow them down. Look. All the way. Come and see, look, this is if I can show you, you've got, this is one of the new canes coming up for next year's fruit and this is the old cane, so the old cane and here and take it off as low as you can get and take that away. Another one here, look, let's have this one off, show you how to do it. Just take them off. The string will usually give up if you've got string on them, if it's jute string. Follow it all the way down. Same again, look, you've got a new cane coming up, and there's the old cane. 
can you see? So we just take that one off as low as we can. There's a get that plastic and put it in my pocket. Look, there we go. Just cut them up and then, as I say, pop them through the shredder. What I'll do now, I'll take all the old canes off and then show you the new canes before we tie them up. Now that's all the old canes removed. The new canes will tie in. Now if you look at this one, it's absolutely huge. So we'll tie it on and just bring it down and keep tying it on till, while it goes along. In the spring we'll come along and we'll cut the ends off and then that's when the break below and give you more of a crop then. But in the moment we just tie them in and bend them over when they get too long and tie them in again. Now I've put three strings on. Now remember these are going to be there all winter so really make a good job of tying them on. Whereas the the late fruiting ones we just loop round because we know when they're finished fruiting we've got to take it all off. But this is going to last long all winter so we need to tie them on pretty good. Here we go, go round the back of the stem, round the wire, back round the stem and round the wire again and then just carry on. You can see it's nice and loose, not going to damage the cane at all. And we continue that all the way. Remember as these small canes come up you'll have to tie those in as well. We'll just do this one for you. Just get in position, go round, back and then move on. And that's plenty loose enough, look. There you go. Plenty loose enough for it to grow and to hold it firm in the winter. Same again. You can do them quite quick once you get going. I'll just put a tie on that one to hold it while we do the next run. I'll tie these few in and then I'll come back and show you how we do the top. Now that's the bottom tied in. Now you'll find that some of them are not in the rows but just pull them over and tie them in for now. Right, so here we go and then look. We've got to tie this one here and then we're going to bend it down for the winter. So we need really we have to put a quick tie on that to hold the string steady look. There you go. Now we can tie them on. Same as before. The odd leaf might come off, but don't worry. You see that's got it now, and it's quite loose. And then we'll carry on, and then we'll pick this top up as we go. That's them tied in along the top. Now, if you just left them like that, this will grow on like this one has. and get huge, so what I do is I take them over and tie them down. So we just have a short piece of string, and just couple of times just around the around the stem and then just hold them just hold them like that so it's got them nice and steady the idea being that 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 has got it held into there but it's there's room enough for it if it wants to thicken and grow it still can but all these, look, we just bring them over and just tie them in. It's quite a job, but well worth it come next year when they're all nicely fruiting. It'd be well worth the effort of doing it nicely now. Now this long one, as you can see, it's huge. So we just gently bring it down and mould it into those and we'll put a tie on it here and down there just stop it from blowing about in the wind nice and loose and the end is this one stop it blowing and snapping we'll just take it down like we did the other ones a couple of times around there you see 
and then just take it round take it round that bit of timber and just tie it remember not to pull everything too tight just keep it loose but held there you go you see that's got it now these will all grow into one another and the leaves will turn so that'll be fine I'll just finish this little bit and show you the whole lot tied down. Well then that's the tops all tied down. They're not going to be moving about and snapping in the wind. They will grow on, so you might have to keep coming and tying up. There'll be loads, hopefully, of these new shoots coming in that will want tying on because these are the fruit bearers for next year. The other thing I'll do is as it's available they've got none at the moment but as soon as they get some manure or some well rotted compost it'll probably be the well rotted compost before the manure i shall put a good cloak on the soil around the roots and i shall look making sure these have watered well perhaps a little bit of bone meal fish blood and bone around the roots first just to give them some feed to get the the new growth on it before the winter because the more growth we have now the more fruit you'll get next year now we've done the raspberry canes for next year now these are primer canes these have grown up from the bottom this year they'll be fruiting in the next few weeks and then when they're finished we'll cut them completely off the whole lot at the bottom mulch them feed them and then next year the next lot will come up just the same primer canes can you remember when we tied them in I tied the top in remember when you tie primer canes in don't make too big a job of it like we do the other canes because in a few weeks we'll be cutting them off but while we're in the fruit cage I'll just show you what I've done to the early strawberries now we've more or less finished picking them now and I went through them I took all the old flower heads off and the, the bad fruit that was there because of the weather I took all those off and all the runners and then I've got the rake and what I've done is I've just rode them up a little now they've been rowed up a little bit not a lot because the we don't want to get those roots too wet or still rot but I've rode them up a little to get a little bit more root coming out of them before winter I should probably give them a bone meal feed just for now just to keep them growing well then hopefully next year it'll be a thicker canopy and therefore it'll be a heavier crop these are the later strawberries I don't know if you can see them they're coming through nicely now, showing a nice bit of size on them. The, the one two's got a little bit of slug damage look, but that's fine. For this year we have to allow for that. But they're making good strawberries. Again while we're in here I'll just show you what I've done to the blueberries to stop those pesky flies from eating them before we do. Now, last year we had a lot of trouble with wasps and flies on the blueberries. Once the fruit had ripened, they were spoiling the fruit. So this year we've put an insect mesh over it. As you can see, the fruit is now beginning to colour up nicely. So we've put the mesh on. We've hung it at the top. Put a gather in it, hung it at the top and just let it drape over. Tucked it in the bottom to hold the net steady. If it gets so it's blown about in the wind, then I should just put some pegs in around the four corners, just hold it now. The black, now the blackberry is putting on some good fruit. So what we'll do is, as it ripens, we'll do exactly the same as we've done with the blueberries. We'll put a mesh over it just to keep the wasps and the flies off them. <laughs> Looks like it's going to fruit well this year. But we can't, we well. can't put the mesh on just yet because we've still got flowers on them and we'll let the bees pollinate those and enjoy the nectar before we cover it. 
Uh, that will be it for this week. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Now, thank you for subscribing, and I'd like to welcome all those new subscribers to us. We do appreciate it. Thank you so much for that. And hopefully, we'll see you next week. I do have some onions to put in that new way I've been doing. I'll show you how I do that. And I will also show you the progress of the winter brassicas because now we need to get the land ready for them to come in. I have potted them on and they're growing quite well. So we get the garden ready for those. So we've got some brassicas for when we come out of Euro. So that'll be it for this week. See you next week. Bye now.